back to my channel and if you're new i'm Kay, and in today's video i will be telling y'all about my experience going to a jacques concert here in houston and it was his king of r&b tour so yeah this was officially my second concert and i was so excited because jacques is one of my favorite artists so i was so excited to be seeing one of my favorite artists so I'm going to be walking y'all through my whole experience from start to finish. And I'm kind of going to be comparing it to my first concert experience, which was um, going to Eric Bellinger's concert. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave the link up above. But I told y'all about my experience here on my channel about going to Eric Bellinger's concert at the beginning of December in 2019. So yeah, I'm going to be comparing my Jacquees concert experience with that one because it was low-key very different. So yeah, and I will be adding clips. That's why this video is so long. It's mostly just clips. So I will be adding clips and pictures and stuff like that. So yeah, stay tuned if you want to hear about my experience. So the Jacquees concert here in Houston was on Monday, January 20th. 2020 and it was on Martin Luther King Day which was good for I guess everybody else because no school no work stuff like that I mean I'm not in school and I make my own schedule when it comes to work so I was going regardless but yeah it was on a Monday it the show started at 7 but I bought a VIP ticket so that means I got meet and greet I got little extra stuff that I'm gonna be telling y'all about and um i got early access and then you know just regular general admission so yeah the vip ticket in total i bought it on Ticketmaster, and the total for that was 172 dollars and 87 cents so that's how much the vip ticket cost and i think maybe three or five three to five days before the concert they emailed me and they were like arrive here at this time and we're going to do the meet and greet before the show so the time that i was supposed to be there was at six and the concert was at the house of blues and i've never been to the house of blues before so i left my house kind of late i live like 40 minutes away but if you know anything about houston traffic 40 minutes away is like an hour and a half away. Like traffic is so ridiculous. So I left here kind of late. So I was kind of nervous about that. And I definitely got there late. And in downtown, you know, you have to park, you have to pay, then actually walk to where you're going. So I parked like a couple of blocks from the House of Blues. It wasn't that far. And parking only cost me $5. So that was pretty good. I walked to the House of Blues, well, backtracking, I was supposed to get there at 6 p.m. I got there at like 6.20, 6.25 p.m., almost 6.30. Then when I got to the House of Blues, I was so confused on where to go because the House of Blues is kind of big and it's so many like levels and sections. So I was definitely kind of confused and it's like on the corner of a street. So I turned the corner and everything and I kept walking and I'm looking to the side. And I'm like, I'm not even beside the House of Blues anymore. So I asked this lady in the alleyway. It sounds so weird, but I did. And she told me where to go. And so where I was supposed to be going was on the third floor. So I went up the stairs. They had an elevator, but I just took the stairs. I was low key following this girl in front of me. So yeah, I went up the stairs. I got in line and the line was semi long and I low key started crying because I was like, OMG, I missed the meet and greet. I paid almost $200 for nothing. But little did I know they were kind of unorganized and behind on time. So the meet and greet hadn't started whatsoever. Finally, I asked somebody and I got in the correct line for the VIP. And it was only maybe 20 people at most in the VIP line. So it wasn't a lot of people that had VIP tickets. And they were kind of selling t 
tickets, I guess. Not tickets, but... Okay, VIP got early access. So we were the first that were going to be able to go in and get our spots by the stage. And then while everybody was in line, there was this guy saying, if you pay another $25, then you can get early access. But those people that got the early access, they were still going to be going behind VIP. So maybe like 20, 30 people paid the extra $25 to get the early access to be able to go in behind VIP. So yeah, my little VIP line, we're standing off to the side. And mind you, House of Blues Houston, it's we're on the third level and I look up and I see the sky. We're outside because I was wondering why am I so cold during January? It's still kind of cold. So yeah, we were outside like we were inside, but outside like it was no ceiling. So yeah, I'm standing in line cold. It's almost seven o'clock. We're still not meeting and greeting with nobody. So everybody in the like VIP line is asking like, yo, what's going on? Like, what's up? And they were like, well, Jacquees is still in sound check. So, you know, hold on, hold on. And we're like, so we get like, they start moving us and lining us up and all of VIP, we get these wristbands. So this was our little VIP wristband. And then you got another wristband if you were over 21 and you planned on drinking. But I did not plan on drinking, so I didn't get an over 21 wristband. So yeah, after we got our wristbands, everybody in VIP got their little bag with merchandise because a part of the VIP was getting, you know, some merchandise. And this was one. I got this like red beanie that just says Jacquees on it. Everybody got the same thing. So yeah, we got this red beanie. Another thing that we got, well, the only other thing we got was this backpack, this jawstring backpack that says Jacquees. And yeah, there's nothing on the back. So yeah, that's all we got. And we're going through our stuff and a couple of people start to notice like, yo, this wasn't everything that we were supposed to get because in the VIP ticket, everything that you were supposed to get when it came to merchandise was like a piece of clothing and then um, a picture with his autograph on it and a laminate. We didn't get the picture with the autograph. We didn't get the laminate. And we're just sitting here like, we paid all this money, but we're not getting everything that was promised and things just aren't going like, you know, we expect it. So they're like, just email the people, email the people and they'll get you on track. They'll get you everything you're owed. Skipping ahead a little bit after the concert, I did email the people and they basically told me, oh yeah, we'll get you everything, but you have to wait until after the tour is finished. As of now, the tour is still going on, so I still haven't got my stuff, but that's cool. I really want the laminate. I low-key don't care about the picture. The picture would be cool, but I really want the laminate because that can be like a little collectible. But yeah, I'm going to email them again after the tour is over, over. I think it's over like March 5th or 6th, so that's only like a week away. But yeah, anyway, fast track. We find out that we're going to do the meet and greet after the concert. So we're not doing that before the concert, we're doing it after now. So I cried in line and rushed to get there for no reason because we're gonna be waiting in line like everybody else. So about like seven, maybe 10 minutes after 7 p.m. VIP, they finally let us in. Of course, we're all in the front. Then they let the other early access people in and low key half of them ended up in the front too. And then they let everybody else in. So they played music, like just regular music. One thing I'm learning about concerts, they always, well, concerts in Houston, they always try to play like H-Town music, you know, Bum B, Zero, Fat Pat, people like that. They always play those type of songs somewhere within the show. So they had their little Houston throwback session then they were playing music like The Box by Roddy Rich, Megan Thee Stallion music. I don't like her music, so I don't know what they were playing by her. And just 
other songs that you would hear on the radio. And then finally, the first person to come out was this guy. I forgot his name. I don't know if it was T Real or T Rail something. I don't know. I was calling that man Terrell. That's his name. But yeah, T Terrell, he came out. He performed like three or four, maybe five songs. Most of the songs he performed were about being chubby, being hungry, and wanting to get down with a girl. I think the very last song was the only song that Loki had like meaning to me. It was about losing friends due to like death or murder or something like that. So that was the only song of his that really meant something. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the little clips that I have from his performance in. I wanna feel your body all night long From sun up to sundown I wanna Houston, Texas, what's up? <laughs> Somebody freaky is hard to find Who can ride a good dick and get played on a drop of a hey. Baby, sexy and that's all I need. Baby, so I step back, you know I'm fat. I like the e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e Girl, you will see, I am a beast I'll have you soaking in pain, completely empty I just want somebody To love a fat daddy Be my everybody All you do is fuck me for me, baby I just want somebody was that he had a sense of humor. He was funny, but the music, I just wasn't feeling it at all. So the next um, people that performed was Bluff City. Now, I forgot his name. I think his name is Trey. I'm not sure, but there's one member of Bluff City that kind of looks like August Alsina. So when he came out, everybody thought, it was August Alcina. It was literally girls in the crowd, like screaming, August, August. And I'm just sitting here. I thought it was August Alcina too. I'm not gonna lie. And then like once he got closer, I looked up and I was like, that's not August Alcina. And that's when I started looking at the other boys on stage because there's three members. And I started looking at them and I was like, oh, I didn't even notice y'all. We just all focused on, you know, August Alcina. 
But yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't know who these people are. And then after their first song, they did introduce themselves. And I was like, oh, okay. I have heard them sing before. They featured on some of Jacqueline's music. I've just never actually seen them before. So yeah, they performed a few songs. They actually sing pretty good. Would I listen to their music? Yeah, probably. I haven't searched them up, I'm not going to lie. But if I ran across their music, I definitely would give it a listen. So yeah, that was their performance. I'm going to go ahead and insert the clips of their performance that I have. or the clips that I got from it. And shout out to them. They actually reposted me on Instagram. Um, I made a story saying something about everybody thought Trey, I hope that's his name because that's really stuck in my mind. But I basically said that everybody thought he was August Alcina and they reposted it on their story. So shout out to them. I definitely do. Their music has, you know, a nice little sound to it. I just haven't took the time to look them up. But moving along, after Bluff City, FYB performed. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of bored and disappointed. I don't know if they performed one song, two songs. I don't even know. I think I was on my phone. But I was disappointed because I love Issa. And he wasn't there. And I'm just like... The only person from that whole little group that I was excited for ain't even here. And I'm just like, wow. So I was disappointed. That was that. I'll go ahead and add the little clip of their performance that I have. Oh, 
do. <laughs> so that's that on that. The next performer was DC Young Fly. And if you watch my first concert experience, I've seen him perform before. He actually performed at Eric Bellinger's um Cup and Season Tour. He only performed at some dates, but he did perform. And I, this was my second time getting to see him perform. He basically performed the same songs, but I wasn't bored. I was still excited as if I had never heard him perform before. And yeah, his performance was just amazing. He was the only one out of all the performers that actually got off the stage and came up to the barricade. There was like a little gap between the stage and the barricade, so we weren't even that close to the stage. So I really appreciate him for that. And I feel like people sleep on his music. His music is actually pretty decent. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the clips that I have from DC Young Fly's performance. We be showing up, that do what we do. Everywhere we go, where we at go for Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been 
was getting me hyped the other performers i was just like yeah so dc young fly definitely did a good job in my opinion and shout out to him because he reposted me on his story also so yeah that's that on that moving along the next and final performer was jacques so I don't even know what to say about Jacquees. His performance was just amazing. One thing that I do appreciate about him is that he didn't just get on stage and kind of just jump around, go back and forth. He actually had little dance routines planned. His backup dancers had like outfits and they changed like a lot actually. So it was always something new to look at. So Jacquees definitely put on a good show. So I definitely appreciate that. And of course he did perform the longest. I think his set was like an hour and everybody else's set was either like 15 or 30 minutes, something like that. So I'll go ahead and add all the clips that I have from Jacquees' performance. <laughs> I just 
skirts, but I need a new one. I fucked her, I think I need a new bitch. I got new VVS on my necklace. And I'm out with the old, need the new shit. New! In my new whip, I go vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah, I swerve through the strip line. Zoom, zoom, zoom.
mention but Jacquees did bring out TK Kravitz to perform a song with him I think they performed Ocean it's been a month so I forgot but I think that's the song that they performed together so that was dope I've been watching Jacquees's story on Instagram and he's been bringing out different people but we got TK Kravitz and we also got DC Young Fly DC Young Fly hasn't been at most of the shows so yeah that's that i'll go ahead and add the clip that i got from jacques and tk kravitz performance together <laughs>
no relationship Living my way from 23 And I'm just a single man But I'll be all that you need And I know no relationship Jacquees's performance. I think he does this at all of his shows, but he brings a girl on stage. She sits in a chair and he does his little, but yeah, he did this little 
thing, but the girl was so like shy and she wouldn't do anything. It just came off very awkward. And I've been seeing his other performances that he's been doing in other cities with different girls. The girl at the Houston show, she did not let him do nothing really. And he kind of just gave up on her. But yeah, it was really awkward. I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and watch it. Then y'all can watch the rest of his performance. <laughs> Do a 360, you know that means turn all the way around. Just turn around. Okay, okay. Hold on, keep going. Hold on, now stop, stop, stop right here. Stop now, turn back and put your hand right here. Bit number one. Come on, Chanel. Chanel, that's how you arch your back. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta your hand Chanel, that's your arch? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make it look like Chanel, let me see your arch. This is what I need you to do, right? Just put your hand right here, right? As neat as you can go, and then, you know what I'm saying? Just like that, you feel me? Yes, sir. BG, I need you to drop that shit right quick. Yes! She ain't gotta go out, man. Y'all make some noise for Chanel. Nice to meet you, Chanel.
conclusion, Jacquees' performance was amazing. Even though I didn't get everything that was promised and it was kind of disorganized, his performance made it worth it. Not gonna lie. So after the show, how did it go down? Y'all, it's been a minute. I kind of forgot. But after the show, I think security and like the people working the show was trying to get everybody out except VIP. And this one girl came up to me and I knew she wasn't in VIP because like I said earlier, there wasn't that many that had VIP tickets. So I kind of remembered everybody and she wasn't one of them, but she stood beside me. She's like, I'm going to get a picture with him. And I'm just like, you go girl. Like I'm not the type to snitch, but it's like, I'm not about to lie for you either. So remember I showed y'all this wristband that everybody in VIP had. She ain't had no wristband. So they went down the line and started checking for wristbands. They checked twice. If they would have just checked once, she would have got away with it. So they, the first time they checked, she raised up her wrist and put it down quickly. So the guy kind of didn't notice. So he just kept going. They checked again. He noticed. She got kicked out. But yeah, that was that. So we waited in line. Jacquees came out and he took a picture with everybody. And I have my picture that I'm going to put on the screen. I'm very bad at smiling in pictures. I'm just bad at taking good pictures, period. So the picture didn't come out the best. I'm just glad I got a picture with him. But yeah, he looked good at least. So yeah, that was my little meet and greet with Jacquees. It definitely didn't last as long as my meet and greet with Eric Bellinger. The Eric Bellinger meet and greet was at least a little bit more put together. It was actually before the concert as promised. And it lasted, even though it only lasted 30 seconds, he still talked a little bit. He hugged you, you know, it was a vibe. The Jacquees meet and greet they were definitely rushing us like they didn't really want to be bothered. I get it was after the show. He was probably tired, ready to get something to eat, ready to shower, whatever, whatever. But come on, we paid money for this. They were rushing us like, make sure you have your flashing camera ready. Do this, do that, hurry up. And I'm just, I felt rushed and like they really didn't want to do it. And they straight up told us either you get a selfie or you get our camera guy to take the picture. You only get one picture. And they were saying if the first picture comes out messed up, too bad, so sad. Next. And I was like, dang, like that's kind of messed up. Because this one girl, her picture, it didn't even like save or they didn't take it or something. So she didn't get a picture at all and they would not retake it. And I was like, come on now, that's messed up. But I mean, my picture, my picture straight, so. <laughs> but yeah, that was my meet and greet experience. It was like right beside like the stage. So I don't know, it was kind of just thrown together. And they did have merch there. If you notice the shirt that I'm wearing, is the shirt that I wore to the concert and I bought it online and it is Jacquees' official merch. So yeah, I bought this online for like $40 and they had the same merch at the show. They had the same shirts, the same hoodies. Shirts were 40, um, hoodies were 60, I believe. So I didn't buy any merch because I mean, it's the same thing that I can get online, nothing special. But it was this guy outside the concert that was selling merch. So I bought a shirt from him and it was only $20. And I have it right here. And I was so scared. I was like, watch I buy this shirt and it's misspelled or the picture ain't Jacquees. It's some other person. But this is the shirt that I bought from a guy on the corner. And it just says Jacquees, King of R&B Tour. This was the little picture that they had promoting the tour. And on the back, it has all the tour dates. So I thought that was pretty cool. I haven't worn it yet, but it definitely isn't janky material. I mean, it's the basic shirt that everybody uses for their merch. And this actually is a good brand to put your stuff on. So I mean, hey, but yeah, it's not that bad for $20 to be honest. 
So that was my experience at the Jacquees concert. I mean, I enjoyed it. If Jacquees ever comes back to Houston, I will definitely see him again. He literally performed the whole album, literally every song off the album and a lot of like his hits. There was a lot of songs that um, I didn't get to record because my phone ran out of storage, but he definitely performed You, B-E-D, House or Hotel. I don't know if I recorded that, but yeah, he literally performed a lot of his songs within his little hour set. So whatever your favorite song by Jacquees is, chances are he performed it. So I really did like that. Like, it was so much. I mean, just thinking about it got me excited. I'm mainly excited because I'm going to another concert in like two, three days. But yeah, that was my experience. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave it a like. Comment down below. Let me know what you think, especially if you like Jacquees. Um, subscribe. Click that post notification bell. Definitely click that post notification bell because I'm like I said, I'm going to a concert in like two, three days and I'm going to two other concerts next week. So stay tuned for those if you like my little concert experience videos. And yeah, until next time, bye.